Hello Indie Game fans, we are in the thick of Spooky Month with a large number of releases this week, some of which are horror games but there are a whole bunch of other titles of interest as well, so check out what's interesting in this edition of Indie Gaming this week. Let's begin with They Always Run, a stylish 2D action platformer in a space western setting, taking place in a time period after the fall of the Galactic Empire, where crime is rampant and you play as a bounty hunter chasing and hunting these targets down. I think that it has one of the most amazing hand-drawn art styles out there, with some of the best backgrounds that I have seen, with suitably intense action as well, as your character has three arms. The story seems to be quite classically set up, where our protagonist is doing it for the money, but also for information, eventually getting entangled in a galaxy-wide conspiracy. However, I do believe this is a linear game, so there's no space exploration or choosing which planet to go to, but it does still look like a title of interest. I'm not a huge fan of horror games since I hate getting scared, so in Spooky Month, I do often look to titles like Dead Estate, an action roguelite with a spooky theme but not exactly a horror game in the same way. It is a classic horror game setup where you find yourself locked in a creepy mansion filled with monsters, having to fight your way out with a variety of weapons, and enlisting the help of NPCs in the form of upgrades. Love the pixel art look, so hopefully it controls well enough. This next title has quite an interesting history since Hymno The Silent Melody is the so-called full game version of Hymno, released for free on Steam in 2019 with a massive 5,000 Steam reviews, which made the developer decide to turn it into something with more meat on the bones. Most interestingly, the title from 2019 self-describes as a peaceful 2D platformer with an infinite number of procedurally generated maps, but this version of the game has full-on combat, where you do have the task of removing corruption from the world without succumbing to it yourself. It's kind of strange how this differs so much from the original, but based on the popularity of the free version alone, has me curious about this. An impressive looking first person horror game is Griefwood High, set in a mysterious, ever changing high school where students have gone missing and the evil teacher is stalking and hunting you down as you try to find a way to escape. As such, it has quite a strong Hello Neighbor or Alien Isolation vibe but it's a pure single-player experience which looks pretty intense. The teacher does gain additional abilities and physically transforms as the game progresses and with the procedural generation of the level should have plenty of replayability. An interesting entry for the week is Echo Generation, a turn-based RPG with quite an impressive voxel art style, where it does appear to have a lot more horror elements than I first thought. Oh. 
You play as a bunch of kids, investigating supernatural occurrences in the town, having some pretty strong Stranger Things vibes. However, this is releasing on Xbox and the Windows Store on PC, but not on Steam just yet, which makes the release seem a little weird to me. But if you have Game Pass or an Xbox, go right ahead to check it out. From a new dawn, a hero rises, torn between two worlds, yet part of none. Just one bigger title that may be of interest to indie game fans this week with Disciples Liberation, the latest entry in a long-running strategy game series that dates back to 1999, with the last entry in this series releasing in 2005. I never got into this series myself, being more of a Heroes of Might and Magic person, but it does look to be similar as battles are turn-based on a hex grid. Interesting to see this series make a return, and hopefully it will turn out well. War between the four factions. Use your legacy to battle your foes, find loyal companions, and form a powerful army. Choices are what define us. Seize your destiny and liberate the land of Nevendar. A huge lot of smaller games are releasing, so buckle up, where we shall begin with Bats, Bloodsucker, Anti-Terror Squad a pixel art action platformer where a vampire and his teammates must fight against the sinister terrorist known as Scorpion Supreme, looking like a decent little action title. One of the cozy titles that I've covered before is Bun House, a management farming sim where you play as a bunny managing a greenhouse, looking oh so adorable. In the wake of the tremendous success of Townscaper, we will be seeing a lot more interactive toy builder games where Castle Constructor looks to be one such entry but does add in a defense element, having some traditional gameplay which could be interesting. Thank you. 
Just in Time for Spooky Season is a re-release of Corpse Party, a survival horror title first released in 1996, which had a number of spin-offs and sequels, but this version adds two new extra chapters to the game, making it worth a play or a revisit. is the big three. The plan is to strike their assets. The goal is to remove their control over the global reach. Plan from the top, work your way to the bottom. Interestingly, we have a number of real-time tactics titles this week, which is not a very common genre at all, with standout examples from the past being Commandos and Desperados, where Delphique is a sci-fi entry that looks pretty neat. They're ready to see this mission to the end. Every decision is yours to make. Strike hard. Strike fast. For a different type of farming sim, farming life might be of interest, where it's not so much a game like Stardew Valley, but more of a classic tycoon game where you are managing a farm. I had grapple hoops on my watch list of innovative games to keep track of since this is a stylish first person shooter with basketball, grappling hooks, parkour and explosions so of course I'm in.
If you love classic point-and-click adventure games, Robot might be of interest, where our heroine must save her home in a biopunk space station, with a look and gameplay that is similar to Machinarium or Samorost. <laughs> For your dose of chaotic local multiplayer action, Healing Spree is the title to get, essentially overcooked but set in a hospital, so I do wonder what new twist the developers have come up with. A very pretty looking first person puzzle game is Hourglass, one with the core mechanic of creating a time clone of yourself, which is not a new mechanic by any stretch, but it does look beautiful and I hope that the puzzles are good. Another title that is very apt for the season is Into the Pit, a roguelite first-person shooter where you battle your way through a cursed village searching for your cousin amid rumours of a demonic portal opening up, looking pretty awesome and is one to watch. Jaws is a side-scrolling tower defense game with a fantastic art style, and I'll leave you to the developer for the details. Welcome to Jaws. Jaws is a strategy game featuring puzzles and elements of tower defense. Position and command your minions smartly to destroy all jars and protect each level's sarcophagus. Beware of the evil nasties that try to stop you. Your brave minions will fight them for you, but you must deploy them correctly to achieve a victory. Let's take a look at the minions that dwell down here for you to meet. Ah, look who we have here. The feisty mosquito. Don't underestimate him. This quick little guy has a nasty bite. Oh, here's my favorite, chameleon. Just look at this infectious smile. Be good to him, will you? Now this one is special. The Acorn. Stand straight, soldier. It's time to go to battle. 
command and upgrade these minions and many others to battle your way through Victor's creepy basement. Hordes of evil nasties lurk down here. New challenges await around every corner. Do you have what it takes to accompany Victor on his haunted journey? Hello, my name is Jimmy, and I'm the lead developer of Logic World. Logic World is a circuit simulator like no other. The world is bright and colorful and fully 3D. Another fascinating entry for the week is Logic World, a freeform sandbox builder that is focused on the use of logic gates and essentially the basics of programming, refining an aspect of Minecraft that people love, looking like it could be great. ...massive, intricate machines such as this painting tool, or this playable battleship game, or this programmable computer calculating the Fibonacci sequence. And by the way, it's multiplayer! Self-hostable server software is included with the game so you can build, learn, and program together. Circuits and logic gates have an emergent complexity and structure that I find profoundly beautiful. I want to share that beauty. I want to make it accessible and fun. With the early access launch, we've got a fully featured sandbox mode. There are 30 unique components to build and play with, and many advanced building mechanics. Throughout early access, we'll be expanding the game, adding a campaign mode, mod support, and much more. This is just the beginning. <laughs> The gift that keeps on giving is the 3D platformer Mill Moon. Releasing a free, spooky-themed DLC named Mystery Mansion, making the value proposition even better. A neat, musically-themed action platformer from last year is No Street Roads, where you use the power of rock to defeat EDM and comes to Steam with the Encore Edition after being an epic exclusive, with this version having a bunch of improvements as listed in this trailer. A turn-based tactics title of interest is Rise of Humanity, another sci-fi entry where you're fighting against AI robots, incorporating deck-building elements which could be interesting. Secret Fire is a visual novel RPG which is doing something different, not really my style of game, but it could be of interest to you. I don't know about that. All I know is, there are choices that scar the flesh, and choices that chip away at your soul. I will face my demons, and I will choose my friends. I will build my strength, and I will rise, for this story is mine, and I choose to do whatever it takes. Among a huge week of new releases, I am very selective with ports of existing games, but the console launch of the roguelite platformer Skull the Hero Slayer is not to be missed. 
being one of the best games of the year so far, and for more thoughts on this game, watch my video linked above. I mentioned Spectacular Sparky when talking about action platformers recently, looking like a classically designed 16-bit title, with the sassy, mouthy protagonist and a tribute or two to developers like Treasure. Super Dungeon Maker did sponsor a video on this channel last week, so I'm happy to share that its prologue demo, Things Awakening, is releasing this week, being a Zelda maker, so to speak. Follow Emma and Fenton, a magic tandem, using light and shadows, looking for Thomas Kane, the missing son of famous magicians. In tandem, you will switch between Emma and Fenton in two dimensions. Emma needs to create the correct shadows with the lantern, so Fenton can walk on them and reach the crystal. Tandem, A Tale of Shadows, is a puzzle platformer that plays with perspective and light and shadow, both of which are fairly common ideas in the space, but combines it with a spooky theme for the season. Working together is the only way to progress. Many challenges and dangers await our two friends, and their progress will be complicated by strange enemies. They will also be faced with puzzles, requiring speed and dexterity. At the end of each chapter, they will use everything they have learned to contend with a massive, horrifying creature. Emma and Fenton will have to travel through five bizarre areas of the mansion to find out more about Thomas's disappearance. Will you find Thomas Kane and solve the mystery? I just mentioned the black hearts in my video on upcoming fighting games as well, where despite the less than stellar graphics and limited character selection, does still seem to be worth a play.
The release of Undying did creep up on me as well, where you play as a mother who is trying to protect and teach her child in the zombie apocalypse, where things are pretty dire since you have been bit and it is a matter of time before you turn. As such, I'm not quite sure how this game will work in terms of structure and how long you have to live, so I'll be waiting for impressions and early reviews on this. Why did you call your group mongrels? What do you mean? Uh, all of us were like from a different story. And each of us had no homeland at that point. Me? As you know, I deserted the Wehrmacht in 44. But I've told you enough about me already. Finally, another real-time tactics title enters the fray with War Mongrels, set on the eastern front of World War II, where you play as a ragtag band of characters forced to work together in order to survive. Coming to us from developer Destructive Creations, best known for Hatred and Ancestors Legacy, adding another dark and gritty title to their catalog. Meaning in this war, especially after we met Lucas. He was actually the first person who gave us some sort of direction. Lithuanian, sort of small frame smuggler type with a huge heart. He was the one who dragged us into guerrilla combat against our previous superiors. How did that happen? We were on the run, without any destination. And we had to stop in Tanari where we met Lucas. Wait, have you... Have you heard about the massacre in Panari? Uh, no. You should read about that, and what was happening in the East. That is, if you want to comprehend what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's kick off the top 5 with Inscription, one of the most fascinating games of the week since it is from developer Daniel Mullins, best known for Pony Island and The Hex, and is a creepy roguelite deck builder with horror game elements. From this trailer, you can see a variety of different elements, including first-person exploration and perhaps even FMV sequences, but expect some meta elements due to this pedigree. One of the tactics titles that caught my attention during its Kickstarter campaign is Ever Tried, a roguelite entry where you are sending a mysterious tower in the afterlife, battling enemies in order to do so. It is not a classic tactics title in that you only control one unit, but with a variety of skills and abilities at your disposal, should still provide the strategizing fun. Me being me, I love the pixel art here, so here's hoping that the gameplay systems are deep enough to match. If you've hung around the channel long enough, you'll know that the action platformer Okinawa Rush is on my list of action platformers to look forward to, finally releasing this week after quite a while in development, where the fighting game combo inputs in this side-scroller is the most interesting part, so enjoy this story trailer. 
A dark force is stirring in a hidden underground location on this remote island, northwest of Tamari, Okinawa. The Black Mantis Clan, an ever-growing, ruthless gang of ninja assassins who prize wealth and power above all. Their attention has been focused on Hiro Yashima. Bad dream. It seemed like more than just a dream. A karate master residing in Okinawa, whose secret training has given him supernatural power. It is the Shinku Kiai training manual that the ninja desire. Where is the training manual? I don't know where it is. You're a little late for the party, Mr. Yoshima. I hope you don't mind that I bought some guests. What's going on here? They wiped us out. Hundreds dead and others were... taken. There is an alchemist in Okinawa. Shin! It's too dangerous! Shin! Mr. Yoshima. So good to meet you in the flag. It's in its twilight. The sands have buried its kingdoms. Corruption unburies its subjects. From such bountiful seeds, this world has reaped only entropy, chaos, and night. And though the secrets of Talamel's ruination are entombed below the Sea of Sand, it's a truth that will not rest. A title that showed up in my list of upcoming Souls-like games is Sense of Aura, one that is from a top-down Zelda-style action-adventure perspective, taking place in a post-apocalyptic world covered in sand. As a member of the Remnant Knights, sworn to protect what remains of humanity, your task is to track down a great evil and to destroy it before it causes further harm. Interestingly, this has an open world structure where you're free to explore the sand seas on your ship, stopping on islands and delving into dungeons as you go on your quest. It looks to have an impressive variety of character builds, items, crafting and equipment, hopefully being up there with the best that the Soulsborne genre has to offer, but will be releasing in early access, so I do understand if you don't want to immediately jump in. Still, we don't get many Souls-like games from this perspective, which makes it a curiosity at the very least. I got a press release for Nuclear Blaze just a couple of days ago, and here we already are with the release, but this 2D firefighting action platformer looks pretty unique. Most interestingly, it comes to us from the lead developer and designer of Dead Cells who left Motion Twin in 2019, releasing this game as a solo creator so you know that the pedigree is there. This, combined with the unique premise which is not combat in the traditional sense, makes this something that I'm interested in taking the number one spot. For more pixel art titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.